everybody, it's Riker Rider, and welcome back to Let's Play Wario Land 3. This is kind of the finale, but I don't really want to call it the finale, because there's going to still be things for us to do even after we beat the game. Uh, we are going to beat the game in this update, though. No question. And this last... Of course. Stupid freaking troll. Yeah, this last... This last chest here is gonna require us to do some juggling. I was never good at juggling. used to play all kinds of trading card games with that just love snakes. And here we get the yellow suit. Now that we have 99 treasures, we can finally go back to the first stage and get the last music box, because that's obviously the one treasure we haven't gotten, and I mentioned it because I wanted to give the reason why I wasn't going to the stage before. I am going to turn it daytime, though. Because the music for daytime is a little bit more upbeat, and I... And I figured it would take us back in time to the first stage. However, you know what? One thing I am going to do, since this video would otherwise be really short, uh, and also this is... And also this is going to make the end of the game... Uh, the end of game videos be a little bit better... Uh, is I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it up. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the eight music coins in this stage right now to give you an idea of what, what we're gonna be doing in the post game. And just to show you how well hidden these are. But I am gonna get all eight right now. Because we're collecting music coins now, we shouldn't really have to worry about money for the rest of the game. I need this guy to flatten me, because there's a music coin. Uh, there's a music coin in the corner that I need to be flat to get at. And this will add a little bit of length to the episode, because otherwise the episode's going to be really short. And finale episodes are supposed to be long anyway. Because I know a lot of TV series like to do double-length episodes for finales. Platforms are part of. Oh, that was stupid. I need to pound this guy down here. And not get electrocuted. There we go. Told you, they hide him good. Oh, in this path. about that path my first time through. Now, I can't remember if there are 
music points in here or not. I think there might be, like, at the end of the waves, but that's about it. Or there could be one in the water, sure. How many do I have? Five? I think I know where the other three are, too. Which is good. where the green key is, because there's one up there, too. Here we go. That's seven. Of course. <laughs> wow, I was like a Pixel away from the loading zone there. <laughs> Alright, now let's head up into the new area and up the tree. Now I need to get fat uh, up top here. Did not need that to happen. Yeah, there's lots of these guys in here, and they'll do things like that to you, so like... That's what I wanted to do. That'll let us fall through one block, good. Because you gotta break through a lot of these. Alright, that's our eighth music point. Now it should be a simple trip up to the key and all the way to the top of the tree. Well, simple in theory. Unfortunately, the key's on the outside of the tree, so I am going to have to go back up here a second time. There's our blue key. Uh, we do have one more boss to fight, and this is kind of a tricky boss fight, actually. Unfortunately, the movement on those, uh, uh, on those balls of spider silk is random. You do have to ground pound in order to deal damage to her. Also, st stay in motion or you'll get knocked off the platform. What makes this fight frustrating is that the, uh, the movement on those... on the silk is random. fight can be a little bit nerve-wracking because if you touch the side of one of the pieces of silk you will you will get knocked off the platform 
Anyway, last treasure chest in the game will be the last music box. The gold music box. Now we have all five. And we have 100% of treasures. Whenever you get all eight music coins in a stage, one of the 25 pieces of this grid will fill in. And you'll get a very special reward once all of them are full, and I'll show you what that... Uh, where you will receive your reward. But I'm actually not going to go into it until the post-game. Yep, we get to head back to the temple now. Let's go finish the game. Unfortunately, Oreo kind of stumbled right into a trap, as you'll, as you're about to see. Hi, Rudy. fell right into his trap. Now, I do want to show you something very interesting about the Rudy fight. Uh, the Rudy fight is the only place in the game where you can get a game over. Unfortunately, you do have to sit through the cutscene again, so be right back. Alright, we're back. Now, one very interesting thing about this uh, music track is uh, this music track is not original. Well, it's original from, uh, n uh, from, like, just being a Nintendo track, but this is not the first game this track was featured in. Uh, this, uh, this particular music track had previously been featured in the final stage, uh, well, the final, well, it was also a final boss track, but this game, uh, this track was also featured in, uh, I believe Wario, Wario Land for the Virtual Boy, if I've done my research properly. Takes four hits. Yeah, be very wary of those uh, of those grabs. But all it takes is four hits. There we go. Not a difficult final boss by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not very forgiving because pretty much one mistake and you lose. And now you'll be able to see the perfect ending when you have a hundred percent treasures. You know, I kind of feel sorry for these people inside the music box, because uh, Wario had been tackling and sending all these enemies flying before, and they all happened to be people.
So yes, we do get to keep all the treasure. In true Wario fashion. Now, I believe the size of his treasure bag is exactly the same no matter what your percentage is. I believe low percent in this game is 48%. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And now that the credits have started rolling, I would like to review the game. Uh, being, being at the very end of the 8-bit era, at least 8-bit portables, yes, uh, the Game Boy Color was still an 8-bit system. It was actually more like a portable NES uh, that may have been slightly more powerful. I'm not sure. It's been a long time since that generation, and I wasn't uh, as knowledgeable about the technical side of uh, video gaming, especially with, as far as development goes. This game, ha this game had surprisingly good graphics for an 8-bit system, but like I said, it was at the, at the end. Nothing terribly special, but uh, everything was pretty colorful. They made each individual stage feel like, uh, feel like its own environment rather than a copy of itself, so I'm going to give graphics uh, an 8.5. Uh, sound effects, they had a lot of funny sound effects, a lot of, uh, uh, most of the music tracks, if not all of them, uh, matched with the stage. A lot of them were memorable and catchy, so I'm going to give the sound uh, an eight and a half as well. On, on gameplay, the only thing that bugs me is there's very little replay value, and I'm going to go into that. Uh, when we head when we head into the bonus mode of this game, uh, but it is fun your first it is fun your first time through, but it loses a lot of its luster afterwards. So overall, uh, I'm gonna give I think I'm just gonna give Wario Land Three a solid eight and a half out of ten. But there is more to the game other than this. Uh, and I'm going to get into that on the... Uh, I guess it's not really a bonus episode, but it's... Uh, it's it's going to be more. There's more to do. Because we still have to collect all eight music coins in the level. And then examine our reward for not only that, but getting the seven crayons. And we're going to start with that next time on Let's Play... Oreo Land 3.